Hello beautiful and welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video where we are going to rank my January haul from the absolute worst to the absolute best fail to holy grail. I've been doing this video series for over a year now and I am happy that it's back. Took a little hiatus due to me moving but I am back at it for 2022. So if you want to see some more makeup content on the timeline don't forget to subscribe because I upload five videos a week. <laughs> So what I do on my channel is that I, at the beginning of each month, I like, I do a collected haul. I let you know about all the things that I added to my collection, PR, bought, gifts, uh, I do buy, <laughs> I do buy some makeup, although I'm trying to, I really try to keep it down for February. January was wild though, because I just moved, I couldn't film, I was a little bit stressed, so there's quite a lot of things here. I also, I don't include stuff that I haven't made up my mind about. I don't include stuff that I haven't tried. There's, I can't review stuff unless I've tried them. And what I do is that I come back one month later after my haul, after me trying stuff a little bit more, and I let you know what I actually feel about things. First impressions are all fine and dandy, like I want to show you new things, I want to show you looks, inspirations, swatches, but I also want to let you know about the quality a bit further down the road. That's why I always touch on products again uh, further down the road. So we are going to start with the least favorite products and we are going to end with my favorite product. And this is going to be exciting because I actually have some things here that I'm like, me, me, we can live without this. I don't know how many products these are. I'm going to pop off a number probably here, I think, as we're going through this and we're going to work our way up to number one. I will, of course, link everything that I'm talking about down in the description box. If you shop through my links, thank you so much for supporting my channel. My links are, for the most part, affiliated. If you want to see this haul, I want to see this again, I will leave the haul down below. My battery needs to be changed. I did film this makeup look. It's already live on my channel. I will also leave a link to that down below. Uh, and oh, I will do that actually in the pinned comment together with what I'm wearing because my description box is going to be full. Okay, changing my battery and then we're starting at the bottom. At the bottom, I have the Party Proof Eyeshadow Primer by Colourpop. Bought this myself with my own money. I don't like this eye primer. It reminds me a lot of the Milk grip primer which is not a grip primer it is a slip primer this is a very transparent slippy primer that i personally it helps with the blending but it definitely doesn't help with the pigmentation i don't like these kind of primers at all this isn't for me i know other people love this primer i'm not that person i'm not that person and at the next uh, place i am gonna put the jacqueline cosmetics concealer this concealer, I have a video up on my channel where I'm trying this for the first time, and also the um, the like tint slash primer, which I actually like. We will come to that way up on the list, way up on the list. I really like that one. This one, not so much. I got mine in light peach. This one is one of those primers that is meant to be self-setting, and there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, and I, I'm... I'm 38, I have a lot of fine lines under my eyes, it comes with age, and even though this one dries down extremely fast, so you, you literally have to put it on and blend it right away, I have noticed that my favorite way of applying this is taking it out of the back of my hand and using a concealer brush, like this one for example, this one is a Sueva one, a concealer perfecter, 146, and just going on with a very little amount directly with the brush and blending it out, taking some more directly on the bl brush, blending it out. In that way, it is very blendable. It goes on opaque, but it still looks very dry because it is self-setting. So if you have a lot of fine lines under your eyes, I don't, I don't recommend this concealer. It is perfect for cut creases though. <laughs> It is a really good cut crease concealer and it's also an extremely good spot concealer for that reason because it's very opaque, very easy to blend in with like a brush like this and it dries down on itself. So for that reason, I'm not going to get rid of it, but it's definitely not an under eye concealer uh, if you have any kind of fine lines on your eyes or if you have any kind of dryness on your eyes. It is just... it's... It's just not it. The next thing I'm gonna mention is the new release of the ColourPop Blotted Lips. And I just think that this formula isn't for me. This is a re-release from them. I bought this one myself in the shade on film. And I really actually like this shade. I think the shade is nice. It is like a, you can't even see, it's like a sheer shade. It goes on beautifully. It is meant to be 
like a matte but sheer blurring lip. The problem for me is that these dried up, dry out my lips pretty fast, which is what the old one did as well. So I like how they look on the lips for a pretty short amount of time. I think that like if I went in with this and then put a balm over after some time, I'd probably like it more, but then the matte effect disappears. And I honestly, I mean, there are liquid lipsticks that I find less drying than this. So for me, this wasn't it, but I know other people love a blotted lip like that. I just, they didn't agree with my, my lips. Let's just put it like that. This is something that I've seen a lot of people like. And the only reason why I've only used this a couple of times, I this is the Lip Mask by uh, Sigma. Uh, I've only used this maybe... Well, I've used this both day and night time to be able to really make up my mind about it. And I do like the consistency and I like that it gives a little bit of a milky like tint to the lips. It is pretty like moisturizing. For me, it has a bit of a taste to it. It tastes a little bit like ingredients. Um, and that's the main reason why I've only used it like maybe eight times or something. It's that taste. It's not like it's, it's not like it's, ugh, what a, a disgusting taste, but there's a bit of a weird ingredients aftertaste, like, like you get it on your tongue and you're like, hmm. So that's the only reason why it's lower down for me. I've asked my friend Heather Austin, did you have, did you encounter a taste with these? And she said no. So take this with a grain of salt. That's just something that I experienced. But if you're also very sensitive to like, a little like ingredient taste in your makeup maybe this isn't for you either or like in your skincare because i felt that and i was like i don't know about that i don't know about that one you remember the rare beauty lip balm sticks same kind of a thing although those were way more so i don't think i'm gonna get rid of this one i just will i only kept one <laughs> the other ones i gave away or they're in my giveaway box thing over here just because of that aftertaste thing because I was like oh I don't I don't know about this one next one I am actually going to talk about the Colourpop all amethyst palette I think this packaging is so stunning I bought this palette myself and I think the color story is beautiful I like the execution of like all so pretty I don't think that this formula is the good Colourpop formula. This is the mediocre Colourpop formula. Some of these are so hard pressed that I was having a hard problem getting them up. Even like, see this one here, do you see this st structure and this one in the middle? That's me actually scratching it with a tweezer to get some color off so that I was able to swatch it. So something about mine, I think mine is too hard pressed because I've seen other people swatch it. I've seen like people on YouTube live swatch it and it swatches so much better than mine. So I think that mine is just bad pressed. I wasn't impressed with the quality of this one and I feel the same about the Mandalorian palette. I really like, I feel like this is an interesting neutral palette. I like the duochrome in here. I like that there is a mustard and a peach, but these are so hard pressed that they're a little hard to pick up for me. Like they're not as pigmented as some other shadows from Colourpop, uh, namely some palettes that I've tried after this, like the Star Wars palette, amazing quality. I like the color story of this better than the Star Wars palette, the Darth Vader palette. I like the color story of this one more than the Darth Vader palette, but still the quality of the Darth Vader is so much better than this one. It's just a little bit too hard pressed and I don't know what happened with like these two palettes. They're not the Colourpop that I know and love because I really do love Colourpop. It's just that we don't always agree on what's a good formula or a good pressing apparently. I'm also gonna put this one here. This is a nice palette, but for me, I'm putting it here. This is the Wild Greens by Urban Decay. I'm putting it here because this is, for me, not a perfect color scheme. If you look at this and you're like, oh, this is the perfect color scheme, it is like like a little like muted neutrals with a peachy corner and then there are some greens. I have a video on this one. I will try and link as many of the corresponding videos to these that I'm mentioning as possible down below. I think the quality of these are nice. You can like layer two of these mattes on each other. You can get a little depth. It's not the most pigmented or the most like layerable shades, but it's nice quality. It is way, way better than both the Naked Ultraviolet and the Naked 
cyber according to me the shimmers are actually really nice and pretty interesting i did do another reel on this one just using the neutrals i don't know if that reel is up as i'm filming this but don't forget to check my instagram as well because i actually like i post quite a lot of like makeup tutorials there as well if you want to see even more makeup content i think it's decent are you like if you're looking for a nice perfect green palette is this for you maybe not if you're the kind of person that don't do super intense eye makeup and you like mostly neutrals but you would like to reach for some greens at time this could be for you or at least look at it when it's on sale i'm not blown away but it is a lot a lot a lot a lot better than the other palettes that i've tried from rpk last year because I don't know what was going on there for a while. Now we're getting into some products that I think are good, but it's not like blowing my socks off. It's not like it's better than anything else in my collection. And I think the first one that really fits that is this one. This is the Pathograph Labs and Bridgerton Single Highlighter. I have mine in the light shade, which is... I don't know. Incandescent Gold. O2 beautiful beautiful but this is a very 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 expensive highlighter and the more i've used it the more i'm convinced that this is not even as good as like my colourpop super shock highlighters and with that information at hand i'm like i i understand that when you're paying extra you're paying for the name the packaging the embossing the, the bridgerton theme you're paying for the experience but i also want a bomb product and it is good but is it that good i don't think i agree with that it's like it's nice it's nice but like i can't recommend you to go and buy this expensive highlighter to be like this is the best it's not it's not the best highlighter you're ever gonna try it's really not just get a super shock highlighter honestly it's it's nice but this is the least interesting thing in the Bridgerton collection according to me and i'll be honest this was expensive and at the end of the day i'm like it's nice I feel a little bit the same about this NYX This Is Juice gloss. I don't know if I used this in a video, but I know I've worn it in a video for sure. It smells really nice. This one is the Kiwi Kick. Let me see if I can... What is... Oh yeah, I have the <laughs> boy tear from Hindash here. But let me just swatch it on the side. You can see that it's not really green. It's just like see-through. And there's a little bit of a green tint. It just makes your lips a little... You know when you say a gloss is milky, this is the opposite. It just gives a little bit of a dark cast to it. It actually is really flattering, but at the end of the day, am I going to reach for this over any of my other glosses? It's nice. It's nice, but I, I, I prefer my Sigma and Colourpop lip oils over this one. It's nice, but it's a little bit, and when I may a little bit, it's, it's very sticky sticky it's very sticky and it's like it smells nice but it's like it's just a gloss i'm not like blown away i'm not like blown away natasha denona had a release i don't remember when this was but i know that i didn't buy it at release because i was in the middle of moving and this is the mini biba and the rose cheek duo i'm just gonna rank these at the same spot i have been enjoying both of these this is a little bit too neutral for my liking but this is the perfect palette for me to bring uh, traveling because usually when I travel even if I travel only over day or for like two days I like to bring like two or three mini palettes I like for one of them to be a neutral one and sometimes I do feel like a neutral and this could be the perfect one for me also this peach is going perfectly with this dress this could be a nice monochromatic look and the quality of this one is really really beautiful I just wish that Natasha Nona would do something different than a pink or a peach or a peachy pink or a pinky pink blush I just wish that there would be something else when she's doing blushes or blush duos or blush palettes. Quality though, really, really beautiful. And I also feel the same about the Bridgerton uh, palette by Pat McGrath. This is, again, it's nice. How many times I've said nice? Do not take a shot every time I say nice. I think I'm going to get rid of this packaging. I can do that, right? Is someone going to cancel me now for throwing away packaging? I am not as blown away by the packaging of this it's not even like super high resolution picture on here i like cardboard i like cardboard i'm just looking at this i'm like it doesn't 
it doesn't look like a very well thought through, super good photoshopped picture. Let me put it like that. It's nice. It's but it's definitely not the best motive I've ever seen. It, it, it's the, the Photoshop job. Don't nobody come kill me in my sleep. It's not amazing, according to me. The color story again, it's pretty, but it is like two pink shades. Th this is a one trick pony. Whatever you do with this palette, it is gonna read pretty much the same. And I kind of wish that one of these shades, one of these shades, maybe this one had been like something else so that you literally could take it in a fully different direction because this is just another pink palette from Pat McGrath and it's beautiful. The, the quality is beautiful. These like creamy satiny shade like baked satiny shades oh my god they were so beautiful on the eyes there is nothing wrong honestly with the quality of this i'm just not as inspired looking at this like i am looking at some of the other things that i'm gonna see it's it's pretty but i think that for me and this is something that i need to remember i bought this collection because i love bridgerton i love this collection because i wanted to try more things from pat mcgrath but i need to remind myself do not buy Pat McGrath unless it's a color story that you truly look at and you're like, wow, this is going to be so much fun. Because this is nice, but I mean, it doesn't read fun. At least not to me. I mean, th these are all personal preferences at this point. Next one. This is something I am putting this here. This is the Jaclyn Skin Tint. I might have put this higher had I had this in my right shade. I have mine in light and I am actually going to repurchase this one. I got a coupon from Ulta and I think I'm going to use it to repurchase this one in a darker shade because the light one is too light for me. It just looks a little too light. I will uh, remember to link the video down below where I'm using the Jacqueline products. Really do like this both as a skin tint and as a, as a primer. I've used it as a primer several times under different foundations and really, really like it. I've also used it as a skin tint, uh, but I will say that if I get the right shade, I will probably use it even more. I use mine with a sponge. I think it's beautiful. I know some people don't like it, but on me, it really works beautiful. I will leave the video, like I said, down below. And you can see, I think I'm doing a 12 hour wear test. I like it. I think it's really nice. So check out the video if you were interested in hearing some more thoughts about that. Next, I'm going to do the Charlotte Tilbury's Beautiful Skin Foundation. I've actually used quite a bit of this one. I think this is a really beautiful foundation. For me, if I need this one to last all day, I need to use a gripping primer and I need to powder a little bit over it because it is a bit dewy. And there's nothing wrong with that. Dewy is fine. But for me, it moves in and settles into fine lines unless I use a gripping primer and a, a like a luminous powder or something on, on top of it. I will say my skin looks fantastic with this foundation and the color is really nice too. I have six neutral, but again, it is a little bit too dewy for me to use just on its own. I, I need that gripping primer, but this one together with the gripping primer is a match made in heaven. And actually quite a lot of times when I've used this on my channel, I've actually gotten compliments from you like in the comments saying like, oh, your skin looks so great today. I'm like, this one is really nice. Uh, I do have a video. Oh, I think I have a video using this one, but I don't think I did a wear test in that one, but I've been using it quite a lot and I quite like it. I did in a video that KA went up a little bit ago, I used the Kosas foundation and I did say that this one reminds me of the Kosas foundation, but I like this one more than the Kosas foundation because the Kosas foundation, they look very similar over like six, seven hours, but somewhere around eight, nine hours, the wear time on the Kosas kind of declines and this one stays prettier on me longer. The Kosas one starts looking a little bit heavy and start separating a bit or around like nine hours there and this one does not so i will say that me personally i prefer this one over the closest one i'm gonna put this one here i really really do enjoy this and the only reason why this one is coming here is because there are so many really good products and at the end of the day it is a mini palette and i would just feel like the other things are a little bit more inspirational than this one is but just know that 
for like the last as well two products are really really good products that i really recommend and it just comes down to preference and how likely i am to use them again and again and again so really really do like it but it is a mini palette i do have a video on this one am i using something else in that video no i think it's only this one and all of these are existing shades and if you want to hear more about that i will leave the video down below but the quality of this mini crush palette by natasha denona it's really beautiful. It is her normal good quality and I really do recommend it. I think it's a beautiful palette. Okay, let's talk about this one. I think that this palette is so beautiful. This is the Nomad Whistler Snow Launch. Look at this color scheme. It is so stunning, so pretty. I think this is so beautiful. The only reason why this isn't ranking even higher is because I've been using the other products that are coming after even more, but I think this palette is stunning. It's really beautiful. When I did this video, uh, I did a video doing two looks with this one, this blue one, when I layered it on top of this light blue one, it didn't look as pigmented as I wanted. So if you want it to be like as pigmented as it is in the pan, I would say start with the darkest one and blend it out with the lightest, but you also have a matte black in here so you can always go over and deepen up with that one this like duochrome here it is a light blue uh to a lavender it is it is so pretty and also this green here why well, i'm i'm here swatching apparently like these are so pretty it is honestly like it is where where am i put, let's put it here and i can go wash my hand it is shocking how pretty these are like look at that <laughs> They are so pretty. They're so pretty. Like, oh my God. Yeah, this is a really, really beautiful palette. And the more I've used it and the more I've swatched it, it's just really stunning. It's really stunning. If you like this color story, it is, it is like not a rainbow palette, but it does have a lot of colors from the rainbow mixed in with some neutrals. It's just a more grounded and like a little jewel toned almost rainbow palettes with some pastels and then this uh, duochrome white to uh, pinky red really really pretty palette i've really been enjoying it and i will leave the video down below look at that ah oh, it's so pretty this is my favorite product from the bridgerton and pat mcgrath collection because i feel like this one i mean you do get the packaging it's not perfect but it's 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 pretty and you do also get three different shades this is the cheek palette i have it in love at first blush these are two blushes one sh like with a sheen and one matte blush and then there is a highlighter this is the lightest one there is a darker trio as well think that this is the best bang for your buck you're getting two blushes and a highlighter all three of these are great quality i have a lot of fun with this face palette and this is my favorite product from this line I love Pat McGrath's blushes. This highlighter is beautiful. The concealer, the powder, the, the foundation. She's doing complexion products beautifully. And I honestly think that this is a really nice palette. And this is the main thing that I would recommend from the collection. And this has been my favorite thing from the collection as well. Really like, I think all of the products are good quality, but this is the one that I'm like, yeah, this is my favorite out of the one that's like in this collection. Okay, now we're doing the last palette that I'm gonna talk about actually. And I have so many things that I have discovered in January that I really love that are not eyeshadow, which is unusual for me. But this is the Dollhouse palette by Blend Money Cosmetics. This is her take on a neutral palette. And for me, this is truly what like inspires me when it comes to neutral palette. It is slightly too big to be perfect for me i understand her like going in rows like this because there is a row of like more transition shades like more like poppy mid-tone shades They're, these are all dark like almost black shades there's like a black and olive a black and plum a dark dark brown this is a black and this is a also a dark purple like I think, and then there's shimmers, I think that this could have been, I like this concept from her, but I would like her to not just do these kind of big palettes forever. Because this concept with like different, because they're all meant to be used like in rows like this, that is beautiful. But I also hope that we're going to be able to see other concepts as well in the future. Because at one point, some of these shades are a little too similar and maybe we don't need all of them in every 
palette but the quality is beautiful when i did this i had some problems blending some of the olives here and i said in the video i think it was me being sloppy with the primer and it most definitely was because i've been using this palette quite some times after and it's worked out really beautiful i do have a real as well where i'm wearing some of the uh, purpley shades here and just it's just a really really beautiful palette if you are more into neutrals this could be a nice palette to be like still in the neutrals but like a little bit different if you're not into neutrals and you're looking for that one neutral palette this could be like the one i feel like if i could only keep five neutral palettes at this point in my youtube journey i think that i would keep this one because it is like a little bit different and and the colors are really beautiful and i like the changes that she made to the shimmer shadows as well so yeah i really like it i really like it and i'm excited to see what blend money does in the future i will leave the video down below uh, where i'm using this oh my god this is gonna be so hard <sighs> this is gonna be so hard i'm gonna put this one here i have been using this product from rare beauty pretty much every time i've been doing my brows since i like bought this one with some exceptions where i've been trying to use some other brow products and look at this i hit pan so i've been using this for i want to say almost two months because i bought this at the beginning of january and i uh, hit pan this is a little bit more of a creamy formula this is almost like a putty formula this is a brow duo and it's almost like a putty formula i'm having it in my brows today this is in blonde it also has an applicator here if you who if you want to do your brows like with this applicator there's a brush and there is a little spoolie i don't use these little things because i use a separate brush but in a pinch it's it's right here and i will say this product is beautiful and since this is a a a since this is a putty formula it goes on very smoothly but it's not 100% opaque so it looks very believable uh, in the brows i really really like this formula um the main reason like obviously i love it i've already had pan i've used it so many times the main reason why i'm not putting at this at the tippity top is that if i lost this one I would be able to use something else in my collection. This is not irreplaceable, but I still think that if you like using brow powders and you want to mix it up, I do recommend this like brow pomade putty thing because it's a really nice product, but it's not irreplaceable in my collection. I feel a little bit the same when it comes to this uh, concealer. This is the Superstay Active Wear 30-hour uh, concealer by Maybelline. I did use this in a first impression get ready with me and I've talked about this quite some times. It has like a thin like doe foot applicator that's like not poofy but like thin. It goes on very thin. It has some alcohol in it which makes the formula very thin and makes it like i don't know if i haven't felt like it has dried down my eyes that's just how i want to feel but if you're totally against that not all alcohol is bad but if you're totally against it just know that this one does contain that but i will say it looks beautiful on your under eyes it reminds me a lot of the nyx born to glow concealers the one that has been discontinued this is a better applicator. I think the NYX Born to Glow is a more gel-like. It looks just a little bit more satin-like under the eyes than this one. But for me, these are a medium coverage, a not matte, but more satin-like formula. But I think I prefer the formula of the Born to Glow from NYX. Just a smidge more. But if you're balling on the budget, you want to get something for your under eyes that is a medium coverage, doesn't look cakey, doesn't sell too much in your fine lines. And for me, this wears really beautiful without having to over powder it. I can just powder just a little bit. Think you would really enjoy this. Just know medium coverage, definitely not full coverage, but I like that. I think this is beautiful. I mean, it's v ranking very highly, so I don't think anyone's surprised, right? Nobody's surprised. I'm gonna put the Hindash liner. I'm actually wearing some Hindash today. I'm not wearing the liner though. This liquid liner is definitely the best liquid liner I've tried. If you are looking to replace your liner, you don't want to buy the KVD one, or you think the NYX one. I stopped buying the um, Epic Ink. Is it called that? Because the component after a couple of months or after a couple of weeks started leaking, and that was just a mess. I don't want to have leaking stuff in my makeup collection. It's already too much of a mess, but this is a beautiful liner. This is by Hindash. It is very pigmented. It's, it's like so easy to draw with. 
and it is a brush tip applicator that I apparently had a cat hair in or like a fuzzy very easy to work with very precise pigmented but doesn't bleed or like it's not to the point where it's so pigmented that you're afraid to use it it's a very user-friendly high quality liner if you don't want to buy from Hinda's site it is available at cult beauty and at beautylish i will link it down below very very beautiful liner this one i feel like every beauty youtuber on earth is raving about this one and they are not wrong this is the cream bronzer by rare beauty but as you can see i got this in a shade that is a smidgen too light for me when i have a little bit of a tan which i do i mean i've been to mexico a little bit of a tan so i would like to get this in the shade up but these are sold out because these are so popular for good reason this is hold on to your panties this is better than the milk bronzer like stick thing this is be better than that one so when you see these come back in stock i a million percent recommend the bronzer sticks by rare beauty they go on so easily they are so blendable and look so beautiful on the skin. They are so emollient and like so easy to blend it. You can even put them on over powder if you forget and you accidentally powder before you put them on. Very beautiful and easy formula that's very beginner friendly, but also gives enough definition if you like it's buildable it's beautiful i really recommend this this deserves all the hype that it's getting i will link it down below probably still out of stock though but i'm i'm watching it like a hawk because i also want to get another shade are you prepared for number one i think i think if you watch the get ready with me where i tried this product for the first time and you saw me literally become speechless i think you are not surprised that the patrick ta the brow lamination gel is number one this is amazing <laughs> this is so good is it really called the major brow lamination gel <sighs> i bought this because i had heard that this was wonderful and i couldn't even remember where i've heard it but this is so good this is so easy the i read the instructions before there's like a little barbie comb here and you just take some of the product off you brush it into your brow start with one brow brush 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 and then the instruction says when it becomes a little sticky use this and just press the brows down they are there where you put them until you take your makeup off they will survive heavy winds a little rain a nap anything they are they are like apocalypse approved i love this product this is giving me the same kind of brows that i've always wanted to have and that i can achieve with every other brow product but they don't last and this one lasts when i have put this on i know that my brows are going to look amazing i went into sephora uh, wanting to buy something else and there was a girl coming up to me and she was like are you wearing the patrick ta the brow gel and i'm like yeah she's like i could tell i could tell um and it's true you could really tell because they are just so defined and so where i want them and you don't have to make them as bushy as i do i just prefer to do it like this but you can really just put them anywhere you want press them down and they will stay and that's the main thing for me they will stay it truly does laminate your brows until you take your makeup off and i cannot recommend this product enough okay oh maybe I mean this was number one but maybe i actually have here in front of me something else that's truly been really good for me and maybe this can share the number one spot because this is something that i actually mentioned in my in my january haul and i put it here in front of me because i was like you cannot forget to talk about this this isn't a makeup product but i did talk about this in my haul video that these are amazing so see this as like a shared first position because i love these these are the sexy hair texture sprays in sunny vibes and surfer girl 
these truly give your hair a lot of volume but it also like it gives them volume and structure and hold and texture but i mean these go on i don't want to say sticky but there is a little bit of tack to them but they dry down completely and your hair is not sticky afterwards give them like 15 seconds and your hair is not tacky afterwards it's just you can hug in texture and volume into your hair and if you want to brush out your hair you can it doesn't leave your hair gooky or yunky like some salt water sprays does like if i use them yeah my hair is beautiful but i have to wash my hair at the end of the day because that's a no-go that that does not survive longer than 12 hours but these definitely do they are so beautiful so for me the difference on how i use these is that the one that's called the texturizing spray gel which is this one that has this kind of a sprayer on it this one comes off like a spray can you tell i haven't even brushed my hair but this is like a spray gel so this one i just use it in like my the body of my hair i don't use this at like the roots but this other one that has this sprayer that is like this is a dry spray can you tell this is a dry texturizing spray this one i lift my hair i put it in my roots and i like like work it in a little bit so the spray gel i use in my hair and this dry texturizing spray i use in my roots to get a little bit more like look at this i i didn't even okay it didn't save my hair today because I have not been brushing my hair. There's a reason why this is up in a ponytail. Look at this. <laughs> Don't look at my hair today, okay? But look at my hair normally. Those two products, absolutely amazing. I will link them as well down below. They're not necessarily makeup products. It's not necessarily what I review here on my channel, but I still want to let you know because I think they're really bomb products. Let me know, what was the favorite product that you have tried? Uh, where are we now? We're like in March now because like, as I said, like I like to give myself some time to try the product because sometimes I change my mind or sometimes I really feel like, yes, this is as good as it was the first time that I tried. I just, it takes a little time and I really want to try this stuff. So, sir, are you okay? So I hope that this video was helpful for you. Don't forget to check the description box for the info about all the products and the corresponding videos. And don't forget to check the uh, pinned comment to see what's on my face. And if you want to see a link to these products, I will have another one of these in a month uh, reviewing and ranking the stuff from February. Uh, and yeah, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you again tomorrow for a new video. Bye.